thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to, to share your word with them. Um, Father, and I never count this as a, as a flippant thing. It's not a light thing. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, to control my mind, control my tongues. Let me say only what you would have me say. I place myself under you, and you be the lead and the guide right now. I pray that uh, everything that gets spoken will be fruitful, will multiply, will take root, will bring forth fruit in the lives of people. May it touch them, may it bless them, may it encourage them, may it strengthen them, may it challenge them, and may it spur them. Father, your word is the only thing we need. Spirit, your, your power within us and your presence with us is the only other thing we need. The combination of these two things is dynamite. And we can't get this anywhere else. I count it not a light thing, Father. So may everything I say be honorable and pleasing in yourself. Lead me now, I ask, in your name, Jesus, thanking you, thanking you. <coughs> Amen. Amen. I had a lot to bring tissues with me wherever I go. Could you get me yeah. a tissue? Or I won't be able to read because my eyes are shut. Roxanne? You, you need the mic? Okay. Fill the room, I guess. Uh, or uh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if I say this word to you, I'm going to assume everybody in the room will know what I'm talking about. Yoked. <laughs> Understand what I mean? Yoked. <laughs> I don't mean like yolk as in an egg. I mean, yoked. Like almost tethered. Tethered, yes. Yoked together. So if you have a Bible, and you should, turn to Matthew chapter 11. Often uh, preachers preach on this section, come to me, all you who are laboring and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And they start right at verse 28. And they'll do 28, 29, and 30 of chapter 11. But I want to start at chapter 25 because oftentimes when you're reading the scriptures, it's really important to read all of what's being said and to look at what's behind, what came before, as well as what's coming after so you get a full picture of what's trying to be communicated. Because although the scriptures are broken into chapter and verse, it wasn't written that way. It was written just as as like a letter, just continuous. So you need to keep the continuous thought. So if you start at chapter 11, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 11, verse 25, this is what you read. And I'm reading from the Amplified, so it's going to sound a little different, maybe from what you've got in your hands. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I openly and joyfully acknowledge your great wisdom that you have hidden these things, these spiritual truths, from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants, to new believers, to those seeking God's will and purpose. Yes, Father, for this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one fully knows and accurately understands the Son except the Father. And no one fully knows and accurately understands the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son deliberately wills to reveal Him. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened by religious ritual that provides no peace, and I will give you rest refreshing your soul with salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Follow me as my disciple, for I am gentle 
and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. First thing I want you to notice is that he's giving us rest and refreshment for our soul. Now, if you're not aware, the soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's the soul. Your spirit man is what's born in you when you come to salvation. So now, he's saying, I'm going to give you rest for your mind, for your will, and for your emotions. And when you think about that, that's the place we need the rest. That's the place we need the peace. Now, first of all, I want to say this. A yoke, for those of you who may not know, is like a wooden beam that you put over two animals. Usually, ox or donkeys or something like that. And often, when they're training a new, we'll call him a newbie, a newbie ox, they'll put him next to a mature ox, one that knows the ropes, one that's experienced, one that has been well trained. And they do that because the young ox, the newbie, he doesn't know what to do. So he's pulling, pushing, shoving, trying to get this thing off his neck, doesn't like the feel of that, that's uncomfortable, that's new, I don't want that. And he's shoving himself into the next ox, which is usually the mature one. He's pulling away from the ox, he doesn't know what he's doing. But the mature ox does know what he's doing. He knows, this goes on my shoulders, and I'm just gonna sit here, and I'm just gonna stay here until the master gives me the call. When he gives me direction, I'm gonna go forward but I'm not going forward until he tells me to go forward. So this mature ox will end up training the newbie ox on how to behave. Jesus says, take my yoke. Yoke up with me, is what he's saying. So the question comes, how do you bear up under pressure? How do you deal with grief, with discouragement, disheartenment. How do you yoke up with Jesus? Now, one man can carry a load. An oxen can carry, I don't know, two, three times the uh, amount of a load that a man can carry. But you put two oxen together, and you can take a whole lot more and go forward and get some stuff done, right? So the first thing is, we need to yoke ourselves to Jesus. When we're yoked to Jesus, think about this. We don't just have double the power. Jesus is the very Son of God. Jesus is everything God was in a human form. Which means when you yoke yourself to Jesus, you have just yoked yourself to the very power of God. All. Of it. And there's nothing that you can't accomplish if you will follow his lead and do what he's doing. And I need two hands to explain this. So, at least the way I want to explain it. I'm going to need your help. Can you fix this so that I can have this running? Yep. Thank you. So you put two oxen together, and you get them pulling, and they're pulling together. So you get two ox together, they're pulling together, right? Now you got the mature ox here, you got the immature ox here, 
and he's doing all this stuff, and this guy's just sitting steady. But if they're trying to pull a weight, and the master says, go for it, he says, walk on. Well, this <coughs> horse is automatically going to just pull forward. This guy is going to go, oh, what? What are we doing? Where are we going? And he's going to push and pull and, and everything, right? Through prayer, you and I can yoke ourselves up to Jesus. But a lot of times through prayer, that's like what we're like, the young ox. We're like all over the place. We come into prayer, we're like, okay, God, this is what I got to do. This is what's going on in my life. Can you take care of this? Thank you, God. Right? And we rush in and we rush back out. And we say, God, I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. And we rush in and we rush back out. But the, the problem is we don't learn anything that way. You see, what we need to learn to do in this yoking up with Jesus is we need to, I think, start by giving him the cares and the worries because then our minds can settle. And then we need to sit for a little bit and wait to see when he responds. What does he say after that? So sometimes in prayer, that's what I'll do. I'll just take all my worries and my cares, and I'll just say, okay, I, I need you to take that so that I can hear you, because I need to get quiet, but I need you to take that so I can get quiet. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And this is one of the ways we learn. So as you sit quiet and you listen, he's going to speak to you. Now how he speaks to you might be different than how he speaks to me. And that probably is a good thing. We're all different. He wants us all to have a unique, intimate relationship with him that's unique to us. Unique to you. So it's okay if he speaks to you different. So I might have all kinds of stuff on my head. Give it to him. Sit. Be quiet. And then I hear him respond in the most unusual way. We have a lot of projects going on at our house right now, outside projects. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, we're going to do this spiritual thing. And we're going to get close with Jesus and we're going to sit here and God's going to give me some deep revelation. And he says, you know what I think would really be cool? is if you made this type of pathway through your garden. What? Uh, we're, God, we're talking about spiritual things. Yeah, but you laid the garden in my lap, so let me tell you how to do that. Let me show you what's going to be good there. Check, take a look at this. I think you're really going to like it if you do it this way. Well, that is a really good plan. Yeah, and you're right. I, I do like that. Thank you. Okay, so that one's answered. Okay. So, okay, let's sit, and we'll read your word again, and we'll read your word again, <coughs> and, and I'll read his word, and I'll say, okay, now it's going to reveal something to me as I sit real quiet. And then he'll say something like, pork chops. That's what you should do for supper. John's really going to like it if you do pork chops for supper. <laughs> pork chops? Really? Oh, okay, that's supper. What are we having with him? Uh, mashed potatoes. That'd be good. Oh, okay. All right. So supper's taken care of. Good. Okay. So where's the spiritual revelation? That's what I want to know. Where's the deep thought? Where's the, you know, the meat of the word? Where's all that? I'm oh, getting that. Okay. Just chill. Spend time with me. Don't be such a hurry out of my presence. Be in my presence. So I can talk to you. Because this is what we're, we're talking about. We're talking about a relationship. And in, in verse 27, Jesus clearly says, Nobody knows the Father except the Son. And no one fully accurately understands the Son except the Father. So how are we going to get to know God if we don't spend time with Jesus and with God? And you have to spend time in relationship. Because Jesus Christ did not die to give you a religion. He died to give you the relationship you need to have with God, the one that got broken and got stolen from you. 
He has died to return that to you and put you right in God's hands. So now you're yoked. If you've come to Jesus through salvation, you're yoked to him. And he says, look, I'm going to show you the Father. I'm going to give you God's character. I'm going to give you God's heart. I'm going to show you what my Father's like. Come to me. Because your burdens and your weariness and your heaviness wasn't meant for you to carry alone. It was meant for you to carry it with me. And if you come to me, I will provide you the peace that this world cannot give you. So the first thing is we got to yoke ourselves to Jesus. And in doing that, we got to learn. we got to learn a lot of stuff. And most of it is learning about the character of God. We sang tonight about God having a, being a good, good father. And so many people these days never had a good father. Some people didn't have a father at all. They didn't have that kind of a influence in their life. So they don't understand what a good father is. And they don't understand how good God is. They've got no reference point for that. But our God is gentle. He's humble. That's what Jesus says in verse 29. He's meek. Someone once told me meekness means power under control. And that's true of who Jesus was. All of God in a human flesh. And he never acted out in his flesh. Never acted out against what his father didn't want. Always did what his father told him. Always said what his father told him to say. So that was all of that power under control. Complete control. Did you know you have that power in you? Same thing. Through Jesus you now have access to the Holy Spirit because Jesus went back to heaven and put the blood on the mercy seat there. Satisfy God's wrath. You're not under God's wrath anymore. God does not look at you with any kind of anger or any kind of condemnation. None. Because that's what Jesus' blood did. But Jesus said, I say this all the time because I think we don't get it. He said, it's better for you if I go away. Because if I go away, I can send the Holy Spirit to you. And the importance of that is, although Jesus could occupy physical space, he could not be inside any of the disciples. But he went back to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit, who can be inside every disciple. And he says, follow me as my disciple. That makes you a disciple, means the Holy Spirit indwells you. The Holy Spirit is God, which means you already have everything you need because God is in you. He's in you. You have all the power of God. Yes. Do we let the Spirit of God have control? That's the next question. He says, come, learn of me. So, we've got to be willing to learn. Jesus said, learn of me, follow me, be my disciple. Learning involves listening, watching, doing. we got to repeat what he did. we got to say the things he said. we got to get our minds in alignment with all the stuff that he said. And the, like I said, reading before, what happened before is not pleasant. He denounced certain cities in the verses before 25 uh, to 30. And he says this about them in verse 24. It'll be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Because he clearly says, if you read through it on your own, um, in verse 21, he says, Woe to you, for if I had done the miracles in the Gentile cities that I did before you, those Gentile cities would have repented a long time ago with sackcloth and ashes. Their hearts would have been changed and they would have expressed sorrow for their sin and their rebellion against God. But you won't even hear me. And then he says to them, it's going to be better for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than it is for you. Mm -hmm. The Gentile cities, 
He went to the Jewish cities because he came for the Jews. And the Jewish cities didn't receive him. But the Gentile cities, if you read, 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 you find a lot of the Gentiles were quick to receive him because they were the ones who needed and they knew they needed and they weren't afraid. They were humble enough to say, yeah, I need that. You take the woman who came and begged him for the healing of her daughter and he, he says to her, why would I take the king's food and give it to the dogs? And she said, well, the dogs get to eat the scraps from the king's table. And he said, you're right. Your daughter's healed. The Gentiles were quick to believe. The Jews, not always so much. So we need to follow what he says. We need to learn what he says. We need to mimic what he does. We have to do what he does. In this world, we're not going to get what we need. You all know that. His way is going to feel and appear in your mind as awkward and unusual at first. This is the renewing of your mind that has to take place because we're born here. We're born in this <coughs> sinful state and in this sinful world and we're raised that way. So to step into this yoke with Jesus thing, it's going to feel awkward at first. Like that newbie ox, we're going to go, this is heavy. I don't like this. This is confining. I don't want to do this. But if we will stay yoked, he will teach us. He will show us. Get in rhythm. Get in rhythm with me. You get in rhythm with me, and suddenly your burden and your weight goes on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And my burden, which is really light, is what you're going to start to experience. And if you'll get in rhythm with me, and you pull together with me rather than fighting me, you'll see how easy this becomes. And next thing you know, you've made your way through that thing, whatever that big mountainous thing was, and it didn't feel like a great burden. And it didn't weigh you down, and it didn't beat you up. Because you yoked yourself to Jesus. So you've got to cast all that on him. So the first thing is, Yoke yourself up. Second thing is, be willing to learn. Understand what meekness is. Jesus said, I am lowly in heart. I'm humble. So get humble with God. Get honest with God. I don't like this God. It doesn't feel right. What they said was wrong. But you say forgive them. Forgive them then because I don't know what they were going through, but what they did was wrong. That's just, I'm going to give that to you. Let you deal with that. You can deal with them better than I can. Meekness and humility are very similar. It takes great humility to be meek. Jesus had to humble himself under the will of his Father, and the will of his Father only, and no, no other will. And he did so, and we are told that in the um, garden there, he sweated great drops of blood. He, he just... He knew he had to submit. That's all there was to it. And he knew what he was facing. And you know, he also knew how painful this was for the heart of his father because the Jews had rejected him. And he had come for them. And they turned against him. And he knew that. So that was heart-wrenching for him. I would have gathered you like a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not have me. He said in broken tears. So he knew the only way he could pull all that back together was to sacrifice himself. And he knew he was to do that anyway when he came. <clears throat> if I've never told you before, I'm going to tell you now. God is really smart. <laughs> and he gives really good ideas. And he gives really good wisdom. And he can help you understand stuff. And we need to make sure that we're not coming to God thinking we already know everything. Because we don't. <laughs> right? So, when we come to God... We need to crucify our flesh. Now, earlier I told you that your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. Those things need to come under the control of your spirit. 
And you need to feed your spirit so that your spirit can be strong enough to control those things. Because when those things are under the control of the spirit, you will understand what this rest is that Jesus is talking about here. This renewal, this blessed quiet for your mind. If you're one of those people whose mind just continues to race and you can't seem to get worry or doubt or fear or concern or any of those things out of your head, this is one of the places you need to go in the scriptures and say, God, show me this, teach me this. Jesus, you say, I need to learn this from you. Show me how to do this. I'm going to cast my care upon you. I'm going to leave it there. And then when he fills you with the peace, don't throw that away. Don't push it away. I like to say revel in that. You know? You've seen the dogs. You let the dog out, and what does the dog do? He's running in circles. He's all excited. He rolls over on his back. And he's rolling in the grass. And he's all excited because he's outside. Well, when God gives you joy, when God gives you peace, that's the way you need to respond. Receive it that way. Just like a child. Just jump up and down. Joy is not meant to be like kept in your heart and inside your body and your emotions all contained. You do that to joy and it kills it. But if you loose that, it will multiply for you. So when you're filled with the joy or you're filled with the peace of God, just revel in that. Because believe me, well, I guess you don't, you already know, you have days where you don't have it. So when you do have it, don't push it away. Keep it. Revel it in it. Wrap it around you like a big old blanket and enjoy it. Embrace it. And say, today's a good day. I've got the joy of the Lord today and I'm not letting anybody stay from me. I don't care what they say. And I am going to sing. Even if I sing off key, they can deal with it. <laughs> Spend ample time with them. Find that place of rest. Find that place of renewal, the blessed quiet. And remember, it resides, the rest resides in your mind, in your emotions, in your soul. He puts a big calm. You know, um, when Jesus was in the storm, you remember how he said, Peace, be still, and the storm quiet. Well, that's what he does for your mind and your emotions. And that's what we need. Because how many of you listen to the news? You listen to the news? No. no? If you don't, bless you. Okay. How many are on Facebook? I am. A lot of negative crap there. How many of you talk politics? Maybe in your workplace or the community? A few of you? Okay. I hear about it all the time, where I'm at. There's enough out there to discourage you. You don't, need it. you don't need to go seeking it, that's for sure. You just step outside your door and talk to somebody and boom, there it is, right? So find the place of renewal. Find the place of rest in Jesus. You know, we are to be salt to this earth. We are to go outside. Um, over the last, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years, the church has had it backwards. We think, well, if we hold a big service, we can invite the unsaved in. Mm -hmm. And that's opposite to what the scripture says. The scripture says you're supposed to be the ones who go out. Mm -hmm. So we have to be out in the world. Yes. Yes. And we have to rub shoulders with people. We have to talk to people. And we have to listen to them. Because if they don't see Christ in us, they won't see Christ at all. So we have to rub shoulders and interact with them. And they're going to have a total viewpoint that's not going to be yours and not going to be mine. And that's okay. But as we listen to them, Pastor Bob was speaking on this today. If we listen to them and give them our attention. The Spirit of God will tell us how to interact with them, how to plant some seed or water seed that's already there, and maybe even give you the privilege of being the one who reaps that person right into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, and it won't be easy. And as the days go on, it's going to get harder still. 
However, remember, mm -hmm. you're yoked to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You guys pull at the same rate. Mm -hmm. Get in the rhythm. Mm -hmm. He's going to be right there. Because, you know, when you're in a yoke, you can't get away. <laughs> he can't get away either. You guys are stuck together. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. You've yoked yourself to the most powerful source of relief that there is. And he has provided it for you for your ease today. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I don't know about you, but it sounds like a great train to me. Peace. Relax in it. Let it wash over you. Take a nap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has manifested his great power to you at that very moment. The joy, the peace, that's God manifesting himself in all of his power to you right in that moment. It's awesome. Receive it. Embrace it. Don't shun it. Yoke yourself up with Jesus and you will learn to humbly submit to God. God will show you his mighty power on your behalf, and you will find rest, blessed quiet for your soul, what you're desperate for. Jesus will carry your burden, and he will pull the load with you, never leaving you alone in the task all by yourself, but he will patiently and gently walk this out with you. Now this is important. This is really important. Let me find that and make sure I say that. Meek. One meaning of the word meek is enduring injury with patience and without resentment to be gentle to be easily imposed upon, humble in spirit or manner. Meekness is essentially an attitude or quality of the heart whereby a person is willing to accept and submit without resistance to the will and des to the desire of someone else. Easily imposed upon. You come to Jesus, you yoke up with Jesus all of your heavy burdens. He steps right in there, patiently taking on that task with you, carrying it with you, giving you a good rhythm, showing you how to move forward in that thing. And he does this without resentment, and he doesn't see it as an imposition. Mm -hmm. That's the powerful thing I want you to know. When we go to God any time, and say, I need to yoke up with you to carry this, mm -hmm. he is not put out by that at all. Right. He doesn't see that as a burden, doesn't see that as anything to be um, irritable, irritated by. Actually, he's been waiting for you to invite him in and to give him the opportunity to share that with you. Because I don't know about you, but when you live life with people, it's good and bad. You share it all. You, you share things. And that's what Jesus wants for us. <clears throat> Come to me when you're weary, when you're heavily burdened, when you can't find the peace. I will give you the rest. Because I know the heart of the Father. I know the will of the Father. I know the character of the Father. I know it better than you do. And I'll share it with you. You are... Everybody in this room, you are the one to whom the Son will deliberately reveal the Father to you. Isn't that wonderful? <clears throat> yoke up with Jesus. You're going to need that yoke as the days come. Thank you for your attention. Bless you all.